Tomorrow marks an early election litmus test. New York will hold a special election to fill the seat left vacant after Republican George Santos was expelled from Congress in December. The fight for New York's third district kicks off the battle over control of the House and is expected to be an early messaging and turnout test for both parties ahead of November. Democrat Tom Suozzi, a moderate who held the seat for three terms before stepping aside in 2022 to run for governor, is facing Republican Mazi Philip, who has little political experience, winning her first and only office in 2021 on the part-time Nassau County Legislature. Philip is also an Orthodox Jew born in Ethiopia who served in the Israel Defense Forces and became an American citizen in 2009. The special election is providing an early opportunity to test party messaging and counter-messaging on top issues like immigration, abortion, and Israel's war with Hamas, which are expected to play major roles in races all across the country this fall. The winner of the special election will serve out the remainder of Santos's unfinished term in the House, which expires in 2025. And former New York Congressman Tom Suozzi joins us now. It's good to have you back on the show. Let's start with the easy one. Why do you want to go back? Our yeah, thanks so much for having me on the show, Mika. Our country's in a lot of trouble. And if we're going to try and fix things, we need to change the messaging. It can't be the extremist my way or the highway from the far right and the far left. It's got to be people working together to solve the problems that we face in our country. The things you've talked about on the show, uh, they're serious problems. These are not games. This is real life. And we need people to get beyond this divisiveness and work together to solve the problems. So, Congressman, as you sat down, we showed the front page of the New York Post, which is migrant crime wave. Um, some of the crime stuff is overblown, but there's no doubt that the migrant issue is, is a significant one in American politics right now. Um, tell us how much you're hearing about that in, in, in your district, suburban to New York City, um, but also whether you think, as a Democrat, you can make the argument that now the Republicans are to blame because they're the ones who submarined the border bill. You're absolutely right. This is a very serious problem. People talk about it. People are concerned about it. And we have an opportunity to solve it. We can close the border. We can get money to New York State and New York City. We can get more border agents. We can build the wall. We can do all these things if we go with the Senate bipartisan deal that's been negotiated over the past four months. And instead of going forward with that deal, the Republicans are listening to President Trump, former President Trump, who's saying, don't give Biden a victory. I want to campaign on the chaos. And they're the ones who are keeping the border open. They're the ones that are endangering Israel. They're the ones that are empowering Putin by not doing this bipartisan deal. And people are sick of that type of politics. It's so cynical. As Mitt Romney said, it's appalling. <laughs> so you're running out in Long Island, sub suburban America, when mo a lot of suburban America is leaning Democrat but you're running against a very powerful Republican entrenched machine in Long Island, and you're oddly enough a man of the middle, and yet you sound and seem out there like an agent of change in this election. Oh, yeah, that's what's really odd about this race, is if you want to fix things in Washington, D.C., I'm offering you an antidote to try and come together and say, let's stop all the BS, and let's actually talk about what the people care about. Whereas my opponent is just taking the Republican talking points. She's anti-choice. She's pro-guns. Uh, she doesn't want to do the bipartisan deal. And she's just being led around by the Republican machine that's very powerful. No question, it's a powerful machine. But I beat them before, and we're going to beat them again tomorrow. I have, uh, I have two related questions. The first you'll probably be able to dispense with quickly. In the whole course of this campaign, how many times have you heard a constituent say, God, we miss George Santos? No. <laughs> um, and, and second, you know, if you win this race, you're going to have to run again. In November, for you know, you just get the you get this little. Nobody budget. told me that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> How do you feel at this point about about the notion of uh, of running with Joe Biden at the top of the ticket in 2024 in November? How does that how does that feel to you in your district? And how are kind of some of these larger questions about Biden is, uh, and his competence, his age, and these things that flared up last week? How are those playing out in your district? It's going to be one of the swingiest districts in the country. I'm really not thinking that far. The next 48 hours are really kind of a little bit of a focus, but sure. the president is underwater. Yeah. Donald Trump is underwater. Yeah. They're both unpopular because people are sick of the politics. They're sick of the game playing. They want us to actually work together to solve problems. We know what politics has become. Yeah. I'm trying to talk about what politics could be, which I've tried to demonstrate throughout my career as a mayor, as a county executive, as a member of Congress. 
that if we work together, we can actually fix some things. And that's not happening. When I was in Congress, I was the vice chairman of the Problem Solvers Caucus. 25 Democrats, 25 Republicans. Let's try and find common ground to solve the problems we face. George Santos was clearly a disaster that reflected really badly on the Republicans in Long Island and New York State who helped elevate him. You're only ahead, though, by margin of error, three, four points. Why is the race still so close? It's a very tough environment for Democrats on Long Island, and but I think that my message is breaking through of working together to solve problems. My opponent, I wouldn't even have brought up George Santos in this race because everybody's so sick of that. But my opponent in this post-George Santos era is not being transparent. She's just taking these extreme positions, being led around by the party leaders, both from Washington and locally. And people don't want, how can you not be transparent in this environment? She wouldn't even say who she voted for for president until yesterday or two days ago, I think it was, when she voted for Trump. She's anti-choice. She wants to keep guns on the streets. She won't ban semi-automatic weapons. Uh, she won't do bipartisan deals. She's just doing these Republican extreme talking points. I, I don't care whether they're Republican or Democratic. We don't want these extreme voices. We want people to work together to solve the problems we face. And speaking of your opponent, she's been, shall we say, scarce uh, in this campaign. Absolutely. You, you have had, but we know that Donald Trump has offered his endorsement. Um, oh, yes? I didn't know that. Yeah, and, and, and Donald Trump is also, we know, won and he won and he carried Suffolk County even in 2020 and did pretty well in Nassau as well. What are you seeing right now for just the, the how people around you feel about him at this moment? About Trump? Yeah. People have had it with Trump, too. I mean, the, Trump and Biden are both, as I said, underwater. And again, they both represent at the current time the same old politics. The president's going to have to break through and start presenting the message he ran on in the first place, which is about working together to get things done, uh, which is the race that I'm running uh, as well. And I think, quite frankly, if I win this race, despite very difficult odds because of the Republican machine, because of the, the Republicans have been winning things for the past three years out of my district, running on this message of working together, I can go to Washington and give a speech on the floor of the Congress because I'll get sworn in with everybody in the room. And when I get that opportunity, if I get that opportunity, I'll stand before my colleagues and I'll say, wake up. People are sick of this. Let's get something done to serve the people on immigration, on crime, on cost of living, on the things people care about. All right. Former Congressman Tom Swasey, thank you very much. It's great to see you again. We'll see what happens. Good luck Thanks to so you. Thanks so much. Thank Appreciate you. being here.